This is Motorola's sleekest and most refined foldable phone yet. It's the Moto Razr 40 Ultra, aka the Moto Razr Plus in the US. It continues the same tradition of high-end flagship specs in a flip style form factor. Could this be the best flip phone you can get right now? I'm Will for GSM Arena and let's find out in our Moto Razr 40 Ultra review. Like other flip style phones, the Razr 40 Ultra uses foldable technology to hide a typical size smartphone within a compact clamshell form factor. Moto has switched up the naming this year for their foldable lineup. The Moto Razr 40 Ultra's predecessor was called the Moto Razr 2022. And it's not just the name that has changed, it feels like a very different phone thanks to an improved design and revamped secondary screen. In general, cover screens on these sorts of phones have been small and only usable to access shortcuts and display notifications and certain widgets. In comparison, the Razr 40 Ultra's cover screen is huge. It extends across the folded phone, even around the cameras. You can run all sorts of apps on it too, including Netflix and games. It's nice to have this edge-to-edge -edge screen rather than just a small window somewhere on the back, and it really lends a more elegant look here than you'd find on competitors. The Razr 40 Ultra is thinner and lighter than last year's Model 2. We have ours in Viva Magenta. It has a vegan leather backing that's nice and grippy. There are other color options available with glass backs as well, but all of them have a frame made of 7000 series aluminum. The hinge of the Razr 40 Ultra has been refined with a new teardrop design. It folds flat without a gap. The hinge feels quite sturdy and it can stay open at different angles too, which means you can set up the phone as a sort of tripod for the cameras. This is especially useful for shooting yourself for something like vlogging, and the cameras will even follow you as you move up and down, which is even more convenient. Like last year, the phone has IP52 rated ingress protection. That is less water resistant than the Galaxy Z Flip 4, which has IPX8, but the dust protection may be better here. When the Razr 40 Ultra is unfolded, you get a 6.9 inch LTPO OLED screen with a 1080p resolution. The display is larger than on last year's model, and you also get a faster 165Hz refresh rate. This display is a bit taller and narrower than your typical one, with a 22 by 9 aspect ratio. Content looks sharp here, and there's support for 10-bit color and HDR10 Plus video. The color accuracy can be solid too, based on your color settings. Also important is the crease where the display folds over. It's pretty minimal, but like on any of these sorts of phones, it's still visible from certain angles. The inner display is quite bright. We measured a maximum of around 500 nits with a manual brightness slider, and it can boost to over 1000 nits in auto mode, when you need it in bright conditions. At 165Hz, this screen is supposed to provide more smoothness to your swiping and scrolling than most other smartphones. But for some reason, we weren't able to get it to go over 120Hz, except for benchmarks or certain games. At least since this is an LTPO panel, the refresh rate can dial down all the way to 1Hz when idling to save energy. Now let's talk a bit more about the cover display. It's a 3.6 inch P OLED panel with a 144Hz refresh rate and the same pixel density as the main one. You also get support for 10-bit color and HDR10 Plus video, and despite the smaller size and square 1 to 1 aspect ratio, consuming content here is enjoyable in a pinch. The brightness here is again great, maxing out at 500 nits with a manual slider and going up to 930 nits in auto brightness mode. The refresh rate is smooth here, and again seems to max out at 120Hz when swiping. This isn't an LTPO panel though, so it can only dial down as low as 60Hz. The functionality you get on this display is quite impressive. It behaves much like the full-size cover displays you get on the larger fold-style devices. You can use all of your Google Apps, play YouTube videos, the whole lot. To save space, there are small bubble shortcuts you can use to access your notifications or to see how much battery is left. It's also quite easy to switch between the inner screen and cover screen on the fly, and continue on with whatever app was open. Some apps are not allowed on the external panel, but the vast majority of the apps we tried worked properly. This means you can do pretty much everything you need to on the Razr 40 Ultra without having to open the phone at all. Let's continue with the software experience here. Much like other Moto phones, you get a near stock Android 13, with some Moto customizations on top. These Moto features can be found organized into the Moto app and they include things like customization options and gestures. One cool cosmetic feature you get here is the interactive wallpapers. These are made to animate when you open and close the phone. The gestures here are much the same as you get on any Motorola phone. Still, I found them much more useful here on a foldable. 
It feels great to launch the camera while the phone is closed and snap a selfie without having to touch a thing. If you do want to unlock the phone, the Razer 4D Ultra uses a side-mounted fingerprint reader for biometrics. It's quite responsive. And the phone has support for Moto's Ready 4, allowing you to connect to a larger screen or a PC, and even get a desktop-like experience. Let's quickly touch on something else on the Razer 4D Ultra, the audio. It brings a pair of Dolby Atmos stereo speakers, and they have very good loudness, with clean sound and even some bass. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, we'll leave a link, and through there you can even compare it to other devices. The Moto Razr 4D Ultra comes with 256 or 512 gigs of storage on board, and that's not expandable through microSD. And the chipset of the phone is the same chipset as in last year's model and other 2022 flagships, a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. There is plenty of power here, more than enough for smooth multitasking and heavy gaming. However, it is a bit disappointing that you don't get the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And of course, in benchmarks, the Razr 4D Ultra falls behind other flagships which run on the new chipset. Also, perhaps due to the folding form factor, the phone's thermal management leaves a lot more to be desired, and the external screen can get hot to the touch, as it sits just above the chipset. The Razer 4D Ultra has a 3800mAh battery, larger than what we got in last year's model. The battery life is considerably better too. The Razer 4D Ultra scored an endurance rating of 83 hours in our tests, which is decent for a flip-style phone. The phone supports 30 watt charging, and the charging speed is okay, but nothing impressive we were able to charge from 0 to 45% in half an hour. There's also support for wireless charging. Finally, we're on to the cameras. The Razer 4D Ultra has a 12 megapixel main cam with an extra wide f1.5 aperture and a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera which has autofocus so it can take macro close-ups. During the day, the main cam's performance is decent enough but not stellar in the context of a flagship phone. You get a great level of detail, but the rendition isn't the most natural with some over sharpening. The colors are lively and noise is well controlled. The dynamic range is very good here too, but you may get some clipped highlights and some challenging scenes. One neat function of the cover screen is that it can act as a viewfinder for subjects to see themselves on when you shoot them. You can enable the portrait mode to get a software produced bokeh. The edge detection mostly works well, but stray hair may throw it off, and we saw some other errors in more complex scenes. The cover screen viewfinder also allows you to take selfies with the rear cameras. These look great, as you'd expect. However, these shots taken while the phone is folded will come out in a square aspect ratio. Otherwise, you can use the regular 32 megapixel selfie cam, embedded within the inner screen. Don't write this off. In fact, we even prefer the standard selfie camera's more natural looking colors and skin tones, and the detail and sharpness are excellent. Okay, back to the main cam, this time in low light conditions. These low light photos have a wide dynamic range with good looking light sources and a nice balanced rendition of highlights and shadows. However, sharpness leaves a lot more to be desired and the aggressive noise suppression smears most of the fine detail. If you use the night vision mode though, these issues with the sharpness are much improved and the light sources and highlights look better too. You also get livelier colors. 4K videos taken with the main cam are solid. The dynamic range is impressive, the colors are nice and the level of detail is excellent. Sharpness could be better though. There is electronic stabilization available, which is able to smooth out most of the vibrations, but there is a jello effect in the background. In low light, the video quality isn't too impressive. Noise is well contained and the dynamic range is decent, but overall these clips are rather soft and dark. There's also a night vision video mode, which shoots in 1080p. It boosts the exposure, but you end up with clipped highlights and blown out light sources. Now let's talk about the ultra wide. In good light, it's quite solid and consistent. The dynamic range is good, the color reproduction is in line with the main cameras, and the detail level is good too, especially for an ultra wide. Close up macro shots from the ultra wide look good. They're sharp enough with plenty of detail. In low light, the ultra wide camera's photos are quite dark and soft. At least the dynamic range and colors are okay. Enabling the night vision mode improves the overall quality quite a bit brightening shadows and improving light sources, and clearing up noise. The ultra-wide's 4K videos are softer than the main cams and the colors are different, but the quality is still pretty good for this sort of camera. There's a good amount of detail and wide dynamic range. There you have it guys, the Moto Razr 4D Ultra. It's an improvement over last year's Razr 2022 in pretty much every way, and I find the design with the extended second screen more elegant and useful than what I've seen on any flip phone so far. 
Of course, for the same amount of money, you can get a regular top tier flagship, which in most regards can blow this phone out of the water. But you'd be losing some style points for sure. If you're looking for this type of clamshell flip phone, the Razer 40 Ultra is one of the best out there and worth recommending. Thanks for watching guys. If you're looking for alternatives to the Moto Razr 40 Ultra, one option could be the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, or you could consider the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one.